Hello everybody, how are you today? Okay, let's start our lesson. Today our theme is British homes. Our grammar theme is the future perfect tense. Okay, first of all, mm, the aim of our lesson today is to enlarge students' knowledge about British homes and types of British homes. Repeat the rule of the future perfect tense. Expected results. To know students, uh, students know general information about British homes. They understand the importance of knowing more about different types of homes. They can use their knowledge in their profession. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. A pack of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers, where is the pack of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? Okay, I want to uh, give you some information about British homes. There are 22 million homes in Britain, big homes and small homes, old cottage and new buildings, houses and flats. Americans say apartment, but British people say flat. Many British people love old houses and these are often more expensive than modern ones. They also love gardening. And that you will see gardens everywhere you go, in towns, villages, and out in the country. Some are very small with just one tree and a few flowers. Others are enormous with plenty of flowers and enough vegetables and fruit trees. Two thirds of the families in Britain own their houses. Millions of these houses are the same with two or three bedrooms and a bathroom upstairs, dining room and kitchen downstairs. To pay for their house, homeowners borrow money from a building society and pay back a little every month. Okay, how do you see here uh, the main types of houses in England? First of all, detached house. Uh, next, semi-detached house. Uh, third one is terraced house. Then flats. Uh, and last one, bungalow. Uh, and etc. Houses come in all shapes and sizes and vary from one part of the country to the next. Detached house. Terms corresponding to single-family detached home in common use a single-family home in the U.S. and Canada, single-detached dwelling in Canada, detached house in the United Kingdom and Canada, and separate house in New Zealand. In the United Kingdom, the term single-family home is almost unknown, except through Internet exposure to U.S. media. Whereas in the United States, housing is commonly divided into single-family homes, multi-family dwellings, condo, townhouse, etc. The primary division of residential property in English terminology is between houses, including detached, semi-detached and terraced houses in bungalows and flats. For example, apartments or communia in American English. Semi-detached house. In the British housing boom of the 1920s and the 1930s, semi-detached houses sprang up in suburbs throughout the country and were popular with middle-class homeowners who preferred them to terrace house. In the immediate post-war years, many council houses also followed the semi format, giving many Britons a first experience of private garden space. The semi is now the most common dwelling type in England. 
yet because it is typically subordinate sub and ordinary, little research into its origins and development has been carried out, and the Samis are underrepresented in heritage listings. Terraced house. A terraced or terrace house or townhouse is a term in architecture and city planning referring to a style of medium density housing that originated in Europe in the 16th century, where a row of identical or mirror image houses share side walls. They are also known in some areas as row houses or linked houses. Terrace housing can be found throughout the world, so it is uh, in abundance in Europe and Latin America. And extensive example can be found in North America and Australia. The place this watches in Paris is one of the early examples of the style, sometimes associated with the working class, historical and reproduction terraces have increasingly become part of the process of gentrification in certain inner city areas. Many villages and seaside resorts have large estates of 1960s bungalows, unusually occupied by retired people. The typical 1930s bungalow is square in plan, with 1960s once more likely to be oblong. It is rare for just bungalow to be used in British English to denote a house having other than a single story, in which case child bungalow, see below, is used. Flats or apartments. An apartment in American and Canadian English or a flat in British English is a self-contained housing unit that occupies only part of a building correctly on a single level without a stairs. Such a building may be called an apartment building, apartment complex, apartment house, block or flats, tower block, high-rise or occasionally mentioned block, especially if it is con <clears throat> if it consists of many apartments for rent. In Scotland, it's called a block of flats, or if it's a traditional sandstone building, a tenement, which has a pejorative connotation elsewhere. Apartments may be owned by an owner-occupier, by leasehold tenor, or rented by tenants. Two types of housing tino. Okay, now you can see task uh, first task. Uh, your first task is answer the questions according to today's our theme. Here you can see five questions. Yes, please write down these questions on your copy books and uh, answer them. You can <coughs> send your uh, answers on Platonos. Okay, our grammar scene today is the uh, future perfect tense. The future perfect is a verb tense used for actions that will be completed before some other point in the future. For example, the parade will have ended by the time Chester gets out of the bed. At 8 o'clock I will have left. Keywords here is are verb, past participle, tense and preposition. The future perfect tense is for talking about an action that will be completed between now and some point in the future. Imagine that your friend Linda asks you to take care of your cat for a few days while she goes on a trip. She wants you to come over today at noon so she can show you where to find the cat food and how to mash it up in the bowl just right so that Fluffy will dine to eat it. But you are busy this afternoon. So you ask Linda if you can come at 8 o'clock 
tonight instead. So I want to say use a formula. The formula for the future perfect tense is pretty simple. We'll have plus past participle. It doesn't matter if the subject of your sentence is singular or plural. The formula doesn't change. Okay, when to use the future perfect tense? For sometimes you can use the future perfect tense and simple future tense interchangeably. In these two sentences, there is no real difference in meaning because the word before makes the sequence of events clear. For example, Linda will leave before you get there. Linda will have left before you get there. But without prepositions such as before or by the time that make the sequence of events clear, you need, you need to use the future perfect to show what happened first. Example, at 8 o'clock Linda will leave. This means that Linda will wait until 8 o'clock to leave. At 8 o'clock Linda will have left. This means Linda will leave before 8 o'clock. When not to use the future perfect tense. The future for perfect tense is only for action that will be complete before a specified point in the future. In other words, the action you are talking about must have a deadline. If you don't mention a deadline, use the simple future tense instead of the future perfect tense. For example, Linda will leave. It's a correct sentences, sentence. Uh, Linda will have left its incorrect sentence. The deadline can be very specific, 8 o'clock, or it can be back next week. It can even depend on when something else happens after the parade ends. It has to be sometime in the future. So, I hope that everything is understandable for you students. Okay, our next task is grammar task. Uh, second task, change the verb into the correct form. Okay, write down these sentences on your copy books. Okay, after this lesson, uh, you, I want to, you, I want to know how is your mood? Please describe your mood, um, helping with these smiles. And uh, you can send your answers uh, on Platonus or on my WhatsApp. Okay, your home task is to make a comparison table of Kazakh and the British homes. Okay, our lesson today is over. Goodbye, students. Thank you for your attention.